This is 1380C Action News. Hello and welcome to Action News at 11. I'm Rachel Schneider. We're learning breaking new details tonight, including the discovery of what authorities believe to be human remains near the scene. And in your crime and safety alert tonight, a Toledo man is behind bars, charged with attacking a man and cutting him several times. Toledo police are on the lookout for whoever shot a woman during a burglary. This happened at 1145 last night. According to police records, an unknown suspect broke into a home on the 5600 block of Malden Avenue. A woman there was shot and the suspect got away. Turning now to the latest local COVID-19 data. New numbers of positive cases in Ohio show the infection rate remains high. And in the last 24 hours, more than 6,800 cases were reported. Our team is keeping a close eye on the snowstorm heading our way. 13 ABC's Jack Bassett is live tonight with a look at the conditions outside, plus sharing how ODOT is preparing the roads for the snow. And first warning, Chief Meteorologist Jay Birchback and Dan Smith are tag teaming tonight to bring you the latest on this incoming storm track. Earlier in our broadcast, we showed you how newer local businesses are doing on this small business Saturday. A father-son duo is lighting up Oregon with tens of thousands of lights and they're bonding at the same time. And speaking of animals, a zoo in Michigan is welcoming a new furry face this week. Check out Patty Cake. She's the new resident at the Indian Creek Zoo in Lambertville. They're the ones going into hospitals and going into homes, collecting the bodies of people who have died from the virus. Everybody who comes into the building has their temperature taken and weekly residents and staff members are tested for COVID-19. So at this point, the order still has no clue what more they could have done to stop this outbreak. They cannot open up that gun range until the Sylvania City Council votes yes on a special use zoning permit. When I was in North Toledo, no snow at all. Now here in downtown Sylvania took us only about 15 minutes to get here and I feel like I am inside of a snow globe right behind us. We've seen quite a few salt trucks pulling in, making sure they're all gassed up to keep the road safe throughout the night. Reporting live, Rachel Schneider, 13 ABC Action News. It was a hot weekend here as well as performers and Air Force members are cooling off right before a lot of these planes prepare for takeoff. These shoppers are rushing home with their treasures right about now here at the shops at Fallen Timbers. In fact, I just walked into Dillard's and I happened to speak with a sales associate who mentioned that just yesterday they sold over $12,000 just in handbags, and I happen to uh, contribute to more of that just now. Remar remarkable. Yes, that, right? <laughs> that was that the, the word. word, yes. Good choice of word, remarkable. Remarkable Rachel. That, that would be my magician name. That's good, we cracked it. <laughs> let's go to the theater. Oh, no. And without getting too many bruises, let's see if we can take this baby all the way home and get it all the way back to the station. We were able to make history. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel is the first person to ever catch air on her 18 obstacle Jeep off road course. I spoke with Lynn Gibbs, president of Oregon's Republican Club. On their way back from the Capitol, she tells me her first hand account of what they experienced today. What happened when they got near the steps is anybody's guess. Lynn Gibbs and 22 others from the Oregon Republican Club traveled to Washington, D.C. She says buses from every major city in Ohio followed along as thousands of Trump supporters across the nation converged for a rally. But what happened next, she says she never saw coming. It was very peaceful. And then all of a sudden they went to the Capitol building and that's when it broke loose. Gibbs says she was standing near the Washington Monument. They had speakers all morning and then they had the president spoke at about 1130, quarter to 12. And after that, they asked everybody to um, walk down to the Capitol as a sure show of support. They did breach the building and they did go inside the Senate chamber. There were some people in our group that saw the tear gas. Then I started texting our group, got the car, and started transporting groups back to the hotel. 
On the drive back, Gibbs tells me how she was there to support the challenge to the Electoral College count. The people inside the building uh, with Trump flags, I think maybe there was a sense that is this the only thing we can do? There's frustration and anger. They want the republic to stay the way it is. But as peaceful as the rest of the event she describes was, she says the violence that followed is never the answer. It is not reflective of the whole party. It, it is a faction that is angry, and I hope, and I hope, and I pray as a Republican leader that we find out exactly who went into that building first and who decided to use violence to go inside that building. And as of now, the group is still on their way back to Lucas County. Lynn tells me everyone in their group was accounted for, but nobody was close enough to the building to see exactly who or what started the siege on the Capitol. Reporting live, Rachel Schneider, 13 ABC Action News. Toledo City Councilwoman called for 48 hours of no gun violence this past Friday. That call went unanswered after multiple shootings and a homicide. 13 ABC's Rachel Schneider is live tonight with an update on this story. Rachel. Christina Councilwoman Sir Sandra McPherson says she is not backing down yet. She still believes the city can work together to end gun violence. I'm heartbroken. Not so much that we didn't make the 48 hours, but that someone had to go tell a mother that she just lost a son. Less than 24 hours after the call to put the guns down, a man was shot dead. Toledo City Councilwoman Sir Sandra McPherson gathered with community members Sunday evening at Swainfield Shopping Center, saying she's not giving up. I want to help make this city a better place for our young people. This weekend, McPherson experienced gun violence close to home when a man was shot and killed on Blum Street in central Toledo Saturday night, the same neighborhood where her daughter lives. It's the family last night, I got to watch it firsthand. Open my window and there's a young man dead in front of my house. Not only do you affect the families of the person that you kill, you affect the families around the people that you kill. McPherson says she wants young people in need to reach out, and she is promising to work with the Toledo police, the NAACP, and other city leaders, including mothers who've lost their children to gun violence. This is not defeat. This is not failure. This just means we need to go back to the drawing table. This just means we need to work this thing a little bit harder. She came out here tonight in the snow, could have given up and said, oh, it was a failure. But for her, it was not. And then you saw the tears of those mothers who were here tonight, who have lost children to gun violence. For them, this was not a failure. To them, this was a call to action. And so far, the city of Toledo has recorded 54 homicides this year, sadly inching closer to the record set back in 1980 when the city recorded 60 murders that year. Reporting live, Rachel Schneider, 13 ABC Action News.